10 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. I mean, a young woman is, we do feel she is in very extreme danger. At 6 a.m. this morning, a nationwide manhunt is underway after a local girl was abducted. We'll walk you through that timeline of how these two are connected on your screen and why police say they could not act any sooner. Plus, ice, snow, and rain as yet another round of winter weather passes through our region. We're working for you this morning with live team coverage of everything you need to know about this system. But first, we want to start with that breaking news out of Henry County, where a nationwide Amber Alert has been issued for a young girl. Here she is. This is 12-year-old Allie. Broadway from Bassett. We're told she is in extreme danger. She was last seen around 1:45 yesterday afternoon. That would be Friday. Deputies say she was abducted by a 21 year old. His name Caleb Merritt. That's who you see right now on the right side of your screen. Investigators say the two met on Instagram and that Merritt traveled from Texas to Virginia earlier this month. We're told he set up a camp in the woods behind Broadway's home and met with her several times. Take a look at your screen. This is the car and the model license plates number and everything you need to know to be out on the lookout for. They are believed to be traveled in a 2000 light green Mercury Grand Marquis with Texas plates. This morning, 10 News reporter Shane Dwyer is working for you to break down the late breaking details. Federal authorities and state agencies from across the region now participating in this manhunt that moves closer to the 24 hour mark this morning since the last time this young woman was seen. Henry County Sheriff Lane Perry telling me that as time goes on, it's unclear how that will affect the mindset that these two find themselves in and how that may affect their actions. In the last week, Caleb Merritt is believed to have left his home in Texas and showed up in Henry County. The sheriff's office says camping out in the woods near Allie Broadway's house in Bassett. A social media platform flagged their conversations for concerning content and alerted police a few days ago. That's when the sheriff's office tracked him down Thursday and seized what was likely his cell phone. It's unclear if Merritt was already planning to take Broadway with him at that point, but Sheriff Lane Perry said they couldn't arrest him. We checked, we pushed every avenue there was, but there just wasn't probable cause at that time. And when we do say concerning, that is a general term. Uh, there were things, but when following the law, uh, there was not probable cause. Investigators are now trying to piece together what happened following their run in with him Thursday and before Broadway was reported missing the next day. Perry says at this point they don't believe him to be armed and they could be headed back to Texas. Investigators are working to track any other possible electronics they may be using, but say the public can help bring this girl home. We're expecting to learn more from the sheriff's office at some point this afternoon. Again, they say the most important thing that you can do is if you saw anything yesterday or had any contact with this young man over the course of the last few days, please give them a call. In Henry County, Shane Dwyer, 10 News, working for you. Of course, we'll continue to follow with this breaking situation all morning long. Look for updates on our website, WSLS.com. The other big story this morning, of course, is that winter weather. At 6.03 on your Saturday morning, I say good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. I'm McKinley Strother. It's not only the third weekend in a row that we've dealt with this, but it's the second round in just three days. Meteorologist Justin McKee is standing by with your full forecast. But Forest Meteorologist Chris Michaels joins us now with what we can expect. Chris, catch us up. All right, McKinley, good morning to you. Yeah, so we're already noticing that freezing rain moving into parts of the area as we start you out with a live look from our new College Institute Skycam in Martinsville. Again, the thing about freezing rain is it just looks like plain old rain, but it freezes on contact with the ground. Serious situation for us in Appomattox and Charlotte counties where you're under an ice storm warning. You head toward Lynchburg, Bedford, Rustburg, South Outside Smith Mountain Lake, Rocky Mount and Floyd. That's where you're under a winter storm warning with slightly less ice totals than our friends in Charlotte and Appomattox counties. Lesser ice as you head farther to the west toward Roanoke, the NRV and the Highlands, but you under a winter weather advisory so far here as we go through the day today and as we head into the early evening hours. Now the main threats of course going to be icy roads. If you can, please stay off of them on a day like today. Down trees and power outages are more possible as you head into the winter storm warning and into the ice storm warning. If there's some good news with this is that the air is not going to be brutally cold, nor do we see any strong wind. But there you have that pink. Our ice storm has begun, especially along into the east of the parkway with lighter precipitation being detected by radar in parts of the NRV and the Roanoke Valley. This is something that's going to continue for us off and on as we go through the rest of the day. Today may start to finally see some rain gradually taking over. As 
as we head into the afternoon after 5 or 6 p.m. This comes to an end, but your reports are very important in, on any given day. We want to see them. Make sure that you look up on our weather app, pin it. You see that camera icon? You see that red button? You hit drop a pin, drop your picture, including your location. That way we can best tell the weather story as we go through the rest of the day today. McKinley. All right, Chris, a lot to keep in mind there. VDOT public work crews and first responders have been preparing for this latest round of winter weather, but they do urge you to stay off the roads today. If you can in Appomattox County, the sheriff there says they expect to help state police with an influx of accident reports this weekend. There's not a lot you can do. Uh, four wheel drive sometimes doesn't help a whole lot when there's no traction. Uh, and I think the key is having everything you need at home so you don't have to go out. There's no need in risking your life or someone else's life just to get out in this stuff. Appalachian Power says to have supplies handy, including motor vehicle chargers for your mobile devices, should you be stuck in your car. It's that area that's expected to see the most ice this morning. So we have 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett headed that way in our storm chaser. She joins us live now. Lindsay, where are you located right now? Good morning, McKinley. Yes, right now we are on 460 East traveling uh, towards Lynchburg. We wanted to give you all a look at the conditions this morning on the roadways. They're definitely wet and there is that potential for very slick icy roads. So let's give you a look at the road conditions right now. You can see the rain is collecting on our camera. You can see those roads do look wet. They could be slick. There is that potential for black ice. So, uh, you know, especially on bridges and ramps, you've, you've got to be careful if you have to be on the roads, drive slowly, keep your distance from cars uh, in, in front of you. So again, you know, we're in the Lynchburg area. This danger for icy roads is, is all over, you know, Bedford, Campbell County, Appomattox. Uh, we even saw three VDOT trucks this morning treating the roads just between Bedford and Lynchburg. So they're really trying to hit those areas that are going to be impacted the most. Um, again, like I said, drive slowly. You can see there are some cars that are starting to hit the roads this morning. So just a reminder that black ice could be out there. Uh, our car is telling us it's 30 degrees right now. So there is that potential for, for very icy conditions. Um, and ice accumulation is another thing to look out for. They could be, uh, there could be ice collecting on power lines and that could lead to power outages. So just make sure you're prepared this Saturday morning with all of this winter weather in the area. Uh, you know, it couldn't even hurt to put an ice scraper in the car this morning when I woke up. I had some freezing rain on my car even. So just got to be aware when you're driving in conditions like these, if you have to be out, uh, you know, freezing temperatures, icy roads are all possibilities. So we want to make sure that you all are staying safe. We wanted to give you a look at the conditions right now. You can see the roads are wet um, and, and they could be slick. So just a reminder for everybody out there today to, to be aware of the conditions and, and be careful. But for now, guys, I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. All right, Lindsay, thank you. Good to know she and her photojournalists are taking their time along with those other cars on the roadway. Let's check in now with some other areas in our region. On your screen, we have a live look at Roanoke on the left side. That's from our airport sky cam. And then on the right side is the New River Valley, thanks to our Virginia Tech sky cam. In both situations, you can see precipitation on the blacktop. The tough thing about this form of precipitation compared to the previous two weekends is that it's harder to see if it's going to be ice until it's far too late. You see snow as you approach it, but ice, because it is a blacktop, could be harder to see. So make sure you give yourself some extra time as you get your Saturday morning started. We're not the only ones seeing a wintry mix, however. Across the nation, people are dealing with extreme conditions. Icy conditions Thursday morning led to a massive pileup in Fort Worth, Texas, that left at least six people dead. In Pittsburgh, crazy video shows a, a plane after it slid off the runway at the airport. This all Wednesday night. As always, when we're not on the air, your local weather authority is working for you, tracking the system's every move. Download the free 10 News weather app to get alerts sent straight to your phone. We do want to let you know that the weather will not impact this morning's vaccination event at the Berglund Center. Meanwhile, local COVID-19 vaccine pre-registration forms are closed this week, and that's all because VDH is launching a statewide database on Tuesday. The new centralized system will include current data from health districts. State leaders will use the next few days to organize all the entries and create a more efficient process. We're told this will help local databases who have thousands of entries, but about half of them are duplicates. If we're doing outreach um, or making a call to someone who's over 75 or to someone who has challenges with technology, we don't know if they've already had access to the vaccine. 
If you have already pre-registered, your data will not be lost and you will not lose your spot on that waiting list. Everything will be transferred over. A new CDC report says teachers don't need to be vaccinated for schools to safely reopen. But the guidelines do include other mitigation steps like keeping students at least six feet apart inside classrooms. Yesterday's news fell on the same day thousands of Roanoke Valley teachers received their second dose of the vaccine. I, I won't be changing any of my behavior anytime soon. I will be wearing my mask. I will be keeping my space and making um, smart choices. But I think I will sleep a little better at night. I will feel a little less stressed. I love my job and I love helping children, but it is in the back of my mind. It's been it's been stressful. Last week, Governor Ralph Northam announced that every district here in the Commonwealth must offer some form of in-person learning by mid-March. 610 on your Saturday morning still ahead, a unique celebration of a rich and complicated history. Family has been here um, since slavery. How a local community is honoring its black leaders. Plus, we want to take a look at your screen right now. Allie, on the left side of your screen, is missing this morning. This is the car, the make, and the model, the plate that she's believed to be in. Please take a look and call authorities. Call 911 if any of this looks familiar to you. Our breaking news coverage continues all morning long. And as Chris and Lindsay have mentioned, the roads are one of our big concerns today. Really just a good idea to stay home. And it looks like the roads could be slick into Valentine's Day morning as well. But eventually later on in the holiday weekend, those roads will improve. Your full forecast coming up right after this break. He was a young black man coming of age during the civil rights era. And that was just the beginning. Those people that still call me chief and he says, I don't care about the other guy, you steal my chief. Smashing the glass ceiling in law enforcement by becoming the first black police officer in the New River Valley and later chief. How Bill Brown's focus on education and fairness cemented his legacy in Blacksburg. That's Tuesday at 7 on WSLS 10 News. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. 6.15 on your Saturday morning. Here's a live look at Martinsville from our new College Institute Skycam. Just as I said in our first block of news this morning, you see that precipitation there on the blacktop. Unlike previous weekends where we saw snow, so you knew that the conditions would be slick. Obviously, you can't see black ice. Safe to assume it's there. So give yourself a few extra minutes as you get your day started. Meteorologist Justin McKee has more on your full forecast coming up here in less than two minutes. The city of Radford is looking to celebrate Black History Month a little differently this year. The mayor will be honoring members of the African-American community every day in the month of February. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder shows us the impact and legacy each community has had on that city. Radford Mayor David Horton wanted to do something special for Black History Month, so he got in touch with his community in the fastest way he could, through Facebook. It provides an avenue for conversation for people to share their memories, their stories, and to connect over wonderful people who've done so many wonderful things. Every day this month, Horton has honored African American teachers, civic leaders, and community members who have made the city what it is today, including Sarah Carter. And my family has been here um, since slavery. Uh, my mother's father's people have been here since um, 1792. Carter was born and raised not far from the Glencoe Museum downtown. She says there is no better place in the city to discuss its rich and complicated history. The African Americans have a, a rather unique history in Radford and um, um, a lot of African Americans have made very, very positive um, spots in, in Radford. Carter says the Post have started important conversations for the community about representation and inclusion. Um, with all that has been happening, I think the African Americans need that um, bit of lift up. Horton says the Post have gotten responses from people all over the world. He says it's an easy and important way to share the messages of the people whose impacts can still be felt all over the city every day. One of the most important things that I can do in my role as mayor, but also just as a citizen of the city of Radford, is be an ambassador for our history. In Radford, Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center.
Well, our active weather pattern in southwest and central Virginia continues. I rolled over and checked my phone around 1 a.m. this morning. We already had uh, the freezing rain and sleet mixture in parts of Southside as well as the Lynchburg area. Those are the places that have seen the most precipitation so far today. Uh, if you live in the New River Valley, the Roanoke Valley or the Highlands, uh, you're going to start to see more of that become more widespread over the next few hours. So I want to give you a current picture at the radar. Please take note of the legend up at the top of your screen. You can see uh, rain usually comes in green, pink for freezing rain, purple for sleet, and then blue for snow. And it basically looks like we have all four of those precipitation types on the map right now. A little bit of blue showing up in parts of the highlands. Most of you seeing that purple or pink of freezing rain or sleet. And then you can see even down to the south, a little bit of green on the map indicating the potential for a little bit of rain. Let's take a tour around the area of some of those places that are seeing more precipitation than others. This is the Lynchburg area and a little bit of south side. And uh, these are the places that are probably going to see the most ice accumulation. In fact, as you heard from Chris Michaels earlier in the show, Appomattox County as well as Charlotte County placed under an ice storm warning. That is probably the first time that has ever happened in this area because uh, that ice storm warning is a relatively new alert from the National Weather Service. Uh, everybody else in the Lynchburg area and Southside under a winter storm warning. If we go further to the west, uh, areas uh, to the north of Roanoke and to the west of Roanoke are under a winter weather advisory. So that tells you that the situation not as serious for those places, but there still could be some slick spots on the roadways, especially as this uh, precipitation does uh, become more widespread on our radar. So here's a look at the uh, pops or the chances for precipitation over the next 12 hours. You can see uh, they peak about 100% later on this morning and stay elevated through the middle of the day. As we go into the afternoon, there is the potential that maybe this is more of a rain event than the freezing rain or the sleet. Uh, eventually, the chance for precipitation does go down as we go into the evening. I think most of tonight actually will be pretty dry, but of course it will be cold. So anything that does fall during the daytime today will have the potential to uh, freeze over. So here's the latest look at our ice accumulation map. You will notice no big changes to this except for this purple block as well as Charlotte counties. That's where we're going to see the highest ice accumulation as much as a third to a half an inch or maybe even some isolated higher spots for the blue zones. Uh, it's a tenth to a third of an inch of ice and then further to the west uh, just a glaze to a tenth of an inch. So again, those places uh, the slick spots aren't going to be quite as numerous. Uh, we do want to watch out for power outages as well because in these cases where we get the freezing rain, it does not take a whole lot, uh, just a quarter of an inch to uh, add 500 pounds of weight to the power at tons of weight to those power lines, a chance for those to uh, come down or at least uh, be affected in some way. Uh, so a good idea to have the candles, the warm clothing, the extra blankets, flashlights, things like that in case your power does go out through today as well as uh, into tonight. So here's a look at weather headlines. Of course, this significant ice accumulation is the number one thing we are talking about, but of course it is a holiday weekend. A lot of you might have Valentine's Valentine's Day plans. I do believe we trend drier through tonight and most of Valentine's Day. There could maybe be a few showers uh, towards the later part of the day, but that would be just plain old rain. Eventually Monday and Tuesday will be an active weather pattern in our area as well. Here's a look at future tracker. We're just going to play this out every couple of hours. You can see the pink continuing to push through the area as we get closer to the midday in the afternoon, though you see the temperatures start to come up. They're slightly above freezing, allowing us to see maybe a little bit more rain than uh, the wintry weather, which would obviously help the roadways. Eventually you start to see that the uh, chance for precipitation does go down as we go into this evening. Valentine's Day really not looking all that bad. Clouds and uh, temperatures getting back up into the 40s. Eventually some showers going to be possible if you're going out uh, for date night tomorrow night. Uh, we'll pick up our, uh, our, uh, air, our map here and zoom out a little bit. Take a look at Monday, which could feature a little bit of rain. I do think that just stays of the liquid variety. And then uh, Monday night into Tuesday could feature a little bit more freezing rain or perhaps a wintry mix. So we'll be watching that as well. Here's a forecast the next 24 hours. You see the temperature is not moving all that much. 33 for the high, 32 the low overnight tonight. And the main event really going to be during the daytime today. Uh, overnight tonight, I do think we see the rain in the mix wrap up pretty early. Just a 30% chance on Valentine's Day, 40% for President's Day on Monday. It does look like there could be a little bit of wintry weather on Tuesday. Finally, perhaps a little bit of a break from the action on Ash Wednesday. McKinley. Looking forward to that 622 this morning. Here's a live look at Lexington. This is just off of I-64, and you can see some snow on the ground there. Make sure you give yourself an extra few minutes. If you live in that area, more winter weather team coverage just after this break. 
You can call it a wintry mix or a wintry mess. Either way, we have another winter storm passing through once again. We want to check in with meteorologist Chris Michaels. He is taking a look at the road conditions right now. What are you yeah, seeing, Chris? And, uh, you know, we got a live look for you from our storm chaser. This is actually off Ward's Road, and you see the ice collecting on the trees. This is something that's happened ever since yesterday. Kind of a cumulative thing where you see not just yesterday's ice, but today's ice, and that's going to add to some power added threats in the Lynchburg area. We're already seeing that down to our south in areas like Winston-Salem and in Greensboro. More evidence of that here from a picture. This was yesterday from Amanda Tyree in Rustburg, one of the areas that saw a decent amount of ice. You see that collecting on the trees. The more ice we add on to that, the more of a chance there is for some power outages again as we go throughout the day today and even into the night. So you definitely want to prepare for that. If you're looking to measure the ice on the tree limbs and pass that report along, what you do is you take a ruler, you measure the left half of the limb and then the right half of the limb and then you take the average of the two. If you pass those reports along to us, we can then gauge the power adage threat for your area throughout the day. Our team coverage continues over the next 90 minutes. McKinley. All right, ahead at 630, we continue our breaking news coverage as the Amber Alert from Henry County remains active this morning. We'll share what else we've learned about that abduction. That's next at 630. 10 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. That breaking news and Amber Alert nationwide manhunt for the local girl that was abducted. We've contacted state police for any assistance and the FBI. We'll break down everything we know so far about this case. Plus, as winter weather moves through, we're working for you with live team coverage, letting you know how this storm could impact you. Good Saturday morning. I'm McKinley Struther. We continue with breaking news out of Henry County, where a manhunt is underway. A 12-year-old girl is believed to be in extreme danger this morning after being abducted. Here's what we know so far. Allie Broadway, the girl on your screen, she was last seen around 1.45 yesterday afternoon. Investigators say 21-year-old Caleb Merritt abducted her. Police say the two met on Instagram and that Merritt, pictured here on your screen, traveled here to the Commonwealth earlier this month and set up a camp in the woods behind Broadway's home and met with her several times. They believe Merritt coerced the girl to leave her home via a messaging app. Police tracked the man to a 24-hour fitness center where they confiscated his electronic devices for analysis. We're looking into every avenue that we can. We have multiple resources coming in through the Virginia State Police and the FBI. Uh, personnel and resources are being checked on to do any type of tracking, electronic fingerprinting in the sense of tracking messages, anything to help us find this young lady. All right, again, there is a nationwide Amber Alert for the two. They are believed to be traveling in a 2000 Mercury Grand Marquis. It's light green with Texas registration DMP2294. Anyone having information is asked to contact the Henry County Sheriff's Office immediately or just simply call 911. We'll continue to follow this developing story when we're not on air. You can check our website, WSLS.com, for the very latest. 632, another top story this morning, of course, is that winter weather that's passing through our region. Your local weather authority has been tracking road conditions and snowfall totals. Meteorologist Chris Michaels joins us now. So, Chris, what's the latest? Yeah, so the unfortunate thing is that it's not snowfall that we're tracking. It's more of that ice, and that's pretty much impossible to deal with on the roads. Ice storm warning in effect for Charlotte and Appomattox counties. It's not often you see that. This is where we could see ice totals of up to a half an inch, maybe isolated higher. As you go toward uh, the pink, areas like Lynchburg, Bedford, Amherst, Smith Mountain Lake, Rocky Mount, Southside, and Floyd, winter storm warning where you could see ice totals anywhere from about a tenth of an inch to a third of an inch. Lesser totals toward the NRV, Roanoke Valley, and Highlands, but still enough to cause a mess on the road. So as far as what to expect again along into the east of the parkway. That's where we stand the best chance for higher ice totals. You add that on to what we saw yesterday and then you start to look at the chance for some power outages in addition to the icy travel icy roads out there. So uh, one few ways to maybe prepare for the power outages is have some extra blankets around just in case that is something that happens near you. We've noticed the number of outages going up to the south in areas like Winston Salem and Greensboro batteries flashlight charged phone things of that nature and if you do absolutely have to be out make sure you get the ice scraper out from your car as you notice all that pink that Justin was alluding to before that's your wintry mix of freezing rain of some sleet a little bit of a hole in the coverage there due to a radar outage in uh, Floyd County so it is raining or freezing rain in parts of the New River Valley so the red that's your point of highest impact that's between now and about 6 p.m. 
After that, the yellow because slick spots are going to continue into tomorrow morning because temperatures are not really going to move all that much over the course of the next 24 hours. The green is when things start to get better for us by tomorrow afternoon. We'll be back in the 40s with some plain old rain starting up for parts of the area later today, later tomorrow. McKinley. All right, let's turn now to the Hill City, where nearly 2,000 Appalachian Power customers are waking up in the dark this morning. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennedy is out in our storm chaser and on the ground in Lynchburg. So what are you seeing out there? Were you all hitting any slick spots on your way? McKinley, thankfully on the roads, we didn't slip uh, or slide anywhere, but there is that potential. The roads were very wet and there easily could be black ice anywhere. We took a stop here in Lynchburg, just near Wards Road, and I want to show you the ice accumulation on this tree here. You can just see it glisten. This is all the ice that's collected because of this rain. And just imagine what the roads could be like if it's just like this on this tree. So even here, Chris talked about, you know, this has been going on for a couple days. You can see that this a uh, little grassy spot here is very crunchy. This is all the ice that's gathered. Even parts of the sidewalk are dangerous. This uh, pedestrian bridge here is completely slick. I couldn't even try to walk on this if I tried uh, just because it's almost like ice skating. So these are the conditions you're going to be expecting today. So just be careful if you're on the roads, especially it could be icy and dangerous. And even if you're walking around, this black ice could be anywhere. There was a spot right over there. If you can see uh, just glistening right there, that is black ice that I nearly slipped on. So just got to be careful, especially in these conditions today. But we're going to be on the roads. Uh, letting you know what we're coming across and letting you know what we're seeing and we will keep you posted on the latest. All right, Lindsay, be careful out there. Let's check in with our friends in Southside. This is a live look from our VDOT cam in South Boston. Again, same conditions as we look across our area this morning. Those wet roadways, you can see motorists out there taking their time. Just as Lindsay mentioned, there are those slick spots out there. So just give yourself a few extra minutes. As always, when we're not on air, our local weather authority is working for you, tracking the system's every move. Download the free 10 News Weather app to get hyper-local alerts sent right to your phone. 636 this morning, a vote on the second impeachment of former President Donald Trump is expected this week. Trump's defense took about three hours to present their case, followed by a brief question and answer session from senators. Nadia Romero is in Washington this morning with the latest. After four days of sitting as jurors, senators get a chance to ask their questions in the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump. Does a politician raising bail for rioters encourage more rioting? The defense keeping their answers brief. Yes. As both sides attempt to make their case. What's relevant in this impeachment article is, were Mr. Trump's words insightful to the point of violence and riot? That's the charge. That's the question. And the answer is no. If you rob a bank and on the way out the door you yell, respect private property, that's not a defense to robbing the bank. The day began with Trump's defense team delivering their presentation, taking a little more than three hours to argue First Amendment protection. It is constitutional cancel culture. The defense also accuses Democrats of advocating for violence against Trump. I will go and take Trump out tonight. House impeachment managers responding during the questioning phase. It was not lost on me. So many of them were people of color and women, and black women, Black women like myself, who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. With the Senate set to make their final vote this weekend, the numbers remain on Trump's side. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. 10 News is your impeachment trial resource. You can watch the entire trial on our website, WSLS.com, and of course on our Facebook page. Next in sports after the break, both Liberty and Radford were in action on the hardwood last night, and we crown another regional champ. That and more is on the way just after the break. And it is very important for you to know your zone as we bring you this winter storm coverage. We expect Lynchburg and Southside to see the biggest impacts from the ice. Uh, lower totals for Roanoke, the NRV, and the Highlands. We have a latest look at the radar that's coming up right after the break. He was a young black man coming of age during the civil rights era, and that was just the beginning. Those people that still call me chief and it says I don't care about the other guy you steal my chief smashing the glass ceiling in law enforcement by becoming the first black police officer in the New River Valley and later chief how Bill Brown's focus on education and fairness cemented his legacy in Blacksburg 
That's Tuesday at 7 on WSLS 10 News. Good morning, everybody. Mother Nature didn't win them all last night. The Region 2C girls final braved the elements, and it happened. Three-seed Glenver on the road at the one-seed Radford for a state final four berth. Second quarter, Radford turning it over. Olivia Harris cashing in straight to the rack, and we've got a three-point game. Later, Jada Dean drilling the corner three for the Bobcats. It's a one-point game going to the half. Third quarter, more from Harris and Glenver. Look at the handles, and Glenver starting to find some momentum. Fourth quarter, Islanders up six. Malaysia Donaldson inside for two. Glenver grabs the Region 2C title 53-43. They'll get Gate City next. Senior Olivia Harris had 35. She says halftime was the turning point for the win out and we thought that we had this mentality that we thought we were going to lose at first but then we put it together we had a talk in the locker room we got it straight and then we got the dub i've been working on this the whole year but now i just felt like we just really need this state dub this year and it's my final year so i'm really excited to get it this year news and notes for a high point down the radford women on friday houston agreed to release jj watt and the number four ranked, na nationally ranked now, Virginia Tech wrestling team defeated Pitt 27 to 12 to win the ACC title. They finished the season 9 and 0 undefeated. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Well, when we're dealing with the borderline temperatures and these mixed bag winter events, you guys at home are really important for our winter storm coverage because we really just need to know what you're seeing where you live. And that's exactly what Jennifer and Christiansburg did. You can see the ice accumulation that has popped up over in the NRV on the trees. So really appreciate Jennifer for sending that photo in. You can share your photos with us via email, social media, and of course the pin it feature on our weather app. Uh, we're going to continue to accumulate those as the morning goes along. You can see temperatures anywhere from 31, 32, maybe 30. 33 over in Whitville, so it's certainly cold enough to see freezing rain or sleet. That's the predominant uh, precipitation types at this time, which of course you can see on the last few hours on the radar. It's been pretty consistent in the Lynchburg area and south side, at least since I got into work a few hours ago. As we uh, put a stop on the radar here, you can see most of this uh, completely filled in as far as the radar is concerned. Do you want to zoom in on Lynchburg for you just to get a picture of what's going on in these zones? You can see where Lindsay Kennan is located, uh, freezing rain and sleet kind of accumulating, even a little bit of snow showing up on the map. I don't know for sure if uh, it's for sure snowing that way or if we just uh, have a little bit of issues with the radar over that way. As you go further to the west, the ice accumulations are not going to be as significant for folks in most of the Roanoke Valley as well as the New River Valley and Highlands, but there still is the potential for some slick spots for all of these places as the freezing rain and sleet continues to come down. Here's what to expect for the rest of today. So through about five or six o'clock, we are looking at uh, as much as a tenth to more than a third of an inch of ice accumulation along and east of the parkway. That is where the winter storm warnings are in effect, as well as the ice storm warnings are in effect. Can't completely rule out some uh, locally higher totals and uh, all that ice is going to make travel very difficult for us. And also there is the potential for some power outages and where those highest ice accumulations are going to be found is where uh, power outages are going to be the most likely in this orange color here as you go further to the west uh, the chance for some of those power outages is not quite as high uh, so uh, make sure you have uh, the blankets the warm clothing as well as candles flashlights uh, chris mentioned uh, making sure you have your phone charged before uh, the power potentially goes out uh, so you can still communicate with loved ones things like that uh, and we'll get you through this storm uh, as we go through the next few hours. So I want to give you a look at the weather headlines. Of course, the ice accumulations for today are the number one thing we are talking about. But of course, it is a holiday weekend. Got to tell you about Valentine's Day. It does appear that we will trend drier through tonight and much of the day tomorrow, although there might be a few run of the mill rain showers uh, for the late stages of the day tomorrow. Also a little bit warmer tomorrow with highs in the 40s. Eventually the weather pattern does become a little bit more active again as we go into Monday and Tuesday. So we'll go ahead and zoom things out, give you a look at Tuesday right now. It uh, looks like this is going to be mainly a morning event there and we'll have the chance for freezing rain, sleet as well as rain. Uh, Wednesday looks like the only completely dry day on the actual extended forecast. We have another system that could develop as we go through Thursday and Friday. Another possibility of a little bit of wintry mix, but 
If you're looking for an extended dry period, a little bit more quiet weather, it looks like that will finally arrive as we go into next weekend. Of course, that's still over a week away but uh, we'll let you know if uh, that does continue to materialize as it gets a little bit closer to us. Here's a forecast for the next three days in the New River Valley. You see that chance for freezing rain as well as plain old liquid rain as we go through the rest of today. On Sunday in the Highlands, Valentine's Day, just a 30% chance there, and there could be a few showers on Monday, President's Day in Southside as well. The Lynchburg area forecast features the highest ice accumulations across our region for today. Uh, maybe some rain chances for the other two holidays on this weekend as well. We are going to be watching that system on Tuesday, potentially some drier weather through Wednesday before another possibility of one true mix and rain in Thursday in the Roanoke Valley. McKinley. All right, 651. Here's a live look at an icy downtown Roanoke from our Virginia Tech Carillion Sky Cam. We'll have a live weather update from our crews just after this break. This is 10 News Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Welcome back at 655. The big boxes for the big show. Want to give you a final check of your forecast this hour. Let's start with Lindsay Kenneth though, and get a check of the roads in Lynchburg. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, McKinley. Yeah, we are on Route 29 in Lynchburg driving around. We want to give you a look at these road conditions, so let me switch the camera over to give you a look. Definitely some wet roads and it is freezing cold here. There is that potential for freezing rain. Justin, I know earlier you had talked about, you know, wondering whether there's any snow in this part. We have not seen any snow falling just yet, just rain and freezing rain. So definitely a good day to be careful if you have to be out on the roads. For now, Justin, I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Lindsay. We have another look outside for you over at Liberty. This is our sky cam over in Lynchburg. You can see the precipitation that continues to come to the ground. The uh, temperature in Lynchburg around 31, 32. So any uh, rain that is uh, falling, likely freezing on contact. And we do expect uh, some slick roadways out of this. Parts of the Lynchburg area are going to be under a uh, ice and winter storm warning for today. We're uh, forecasting the potential for a third or maybe even more of an inch of ice and again uh, also have to look out for some possible outages with any of this weather that comes on in. Uh, we'll go ahead and send things back into the studio. To All right, Justin, thank you. We'll be right back at seven for another hour of news, weather and sports plus an update on that Amber Alert out of Henry County. We'll see you then.